Thank you, Don. Uh, next, we have James Whitlow Delano. Um, James has worked in Asia for 17 years, uh, another instance of long engagement. Uh, his honors include the Alfred Eisenstadt Award, the Picture of the Year International, <coughs> Photo District News. His work has been exhibited all over the world. Uh, for this project, he worked with the indigenous people uh, in Malaysia, uh, facing displacement from the deforestation and industrial scale development of so-called green palm oil plantations. James. Thank you um, for this opportunity. Living in Asia, one of the things that I find uh, most challenging is um, after living there for a long time, there will be things that I'll find very interesting that uh, people perhaps in uh, Washington, New York, uh, Paris cannot relate to. And one of the big challenges is to figure out a way to find what I feel is important and translate it in a way that uh, people around the world will find important. And in this case, um, I've been in contact with these first people who are the uh, Batek Negrito people. They are some of the first humans to actually walk out of Africa from an Af Africa to an African-like climate um, left some 60,000 years ago, and their rainforest is being destroyed. Um, almost no one know about these people, but it's for in the name of uh, green biofuel. So I figured this is a way to tie this issue that's important to me, I think it's important obviously to them, in a way that people can relate to around the world. This first uh, image is a, of a logging road that is next to a, a national park and sandwiched between vast oil palm uh, plantations. And this particular road is their last little sliver of rainforest that is being prepared by this logging company and this logging road to be uh, exploited. These are the uh, Batek Negrito people. And what's very fascinating about them is that they left Africa first to an African-like climate and appearance never changed. They left before the Europeans, before the uh, people of the Middle East, before the people of East Asia. And climate changed the faces of other peoples and did not change their faces so much. And it just shows to me personally that race is only skin deep and they were all one big family. They're such an important people. There are only a couple of thousand of them left in the world. Uh, I think there's um, about 20, 30,000 left in the world, 4,000 left in Malaysia, and no one knows, it, uh, almost no one know about these people. This is what's happening to their rainforest in the name of green biofuel, is industrial scale uh, cultivation of oil palm. Um, and I can't say how that half of their, their homeland is, has already been lost to this. The other half is in a national park. The government would rather they not enter. This is a, a, a view I did both sides of Malaysia, East Malaysia where the Batek are, and West Malaysia in the, uh, on the island of Borneo where the Penan. And you're seeing the process here at the bottom of the frame is the clear cutting of the forest. And at the top of the frame is the oil palm going in. And once the oil palm goes in, there's really no going back. This is uh, one of the uh, Batek Negrito people from the particular clan that I visited. Um, I work with uh, a professor uh, emeritus from Dartmouth University, but I actually first came upon the, the Batek people in 1994 on my first trip to Malaysia, and I never forgot them. I have contact with the Philippines, and there are, they are the indigenous people of the Philippines as well. But they, the two groups were separated so long ago that they don't even know of the existence of each other. And that's about it. 